Hello everyone and welcome to another video from Microchip's Memory Technology Series. This video explains the value proposition of low-density serial EEPROMs. In other words, why are hundreds of millions of serial EEPROMs still sold every year? Especially when considering its low-cost and much more famous cousin, flash memory. Full disclosure here, we, Microchip, sell flash. Primarily Super Flash, which is a much faster erase version of Flash. If you want to learn about Flash and Super Flash, then watch some of our other videos. But we're also the market leader in EE prompts. We promote both. Our goal with this video is just to give you some industry insight into picking the right part for your needs. This chart shows densities. Serial EE prompts have been around for about 30 years now. At first, before the rise of low-cost flash, they were pretty widely used. But today, they have survived only at the very lowest memory densities. Serial nor flash densities start about here. And many flash suppliers don't even bother to offer parts below 16 megabits. And frankly, no EE proms make monetary sense above about 4 megabits. Let's show you why that is. Here is an EE prom memory cell. This is the gate symbol, and this is a cross-section drawing. And over here is a conventional flash memory bit. Now there are three key differences you'll see in data sheets between these two technologies that favor EEPROM. One is erase time, two endurance, which is how many write cycles we can do on a cell before damaging it and killing the part, and third is the ability to write or change just one byte or one page relatively quickly. Frankly, all three advantages come from this extra gate that is in every EEPROM cell on the integrated circuit. Flash has just one transistor, or three terminals that we can manage, which makes it very compact. EEPROM has four terminals, so of course, with one extra connection, we can do more things with an EEPROM cell. Here is probably the key one, changing the content of just one byte or one page of an IC without impacting any other cell. Let's use an example. Imagine attending a World Cup soccer match and everyone is already in their seat. However, these two guys in section 111, row H, seats 26 and 27, are switched. They're sitting in the wrong seats. Let's say that the referee for the match demands that these two guys change places before he will let the game start. Now, if this is a NORFLASH stadium, everyone in section 111 would have to leave the stadium, change the order of these two guys outside the stadium, and then everyone would file back in, but now with seats 26 and 27 in the right order. But if this is a serial EEPROM stadium, the guys in seats 26 and 27 just change seats without anyone else moving. Very cool, but to allow this, every cell in the whole EEPROM memory is bigger in area. Two transistors versus one transistor. So that's at least twice as big. So in rough terms, a 4 megabit EEPROM part has a die size that is twice as big as a 4 megabit NORFLASH part. Die size drives unit cost, so NORFLASH is cheaper. So why does the world still buy millions and millions of serial EEPROMs a year if the area penalty is so high? Well, turns out in the small densities, other costs dominate. Inside the integrated circuit, the input-output cells, the charge pump, all the power traces, are all about the same size between flash and EEPROM. And after that, the IC test costs and the packaging and assembly costs are also about the same. So this 2x larger cell size becomes only pennies or nickels at low densities. And the market, which is you guys, are willing to pay that small premium to get these extra values. Down here, EE prompts three values, the ability to quickly change just one byte or page, the faster write times, and the higher endurance went out. Well, at these big densities, anything over about four megabits the die cost difference really starts to show up and grows as the densities go up. And flash wins. So this chart now makes sense. We still ship EEPROMs here, and we can justify making new generations of parts as we go along. And above 4 megabit, the market demand means we can only justify investing in making new NOR flash parts here. 
Now let's look at why erase time and endurance are so much better with EEPROM. Let's start with endurance. Inside of Flash or EEPROM IC, we create a higher voltage from VDD with a charge pump circuit. We use the higher voltage to electrically program and erase the memory cells. For this discussion, let's create a positive 10 volts inside our IC from a VDD of 1.8 volts. With this extra bit select gate, we can isolate the floating gate transistor and we can move electrons to the floating gate and from the floating gate out of and into this N++ region while keeping the substrate grounded, which allows the bit level erase feature. For EEPROM, these electrons jump across this oxide in both directions across the whole gate area. This approach is the least damaging to the oxide and gives more than 1 million write cycles before the device will wear out. To program a flash cell, because we don't have this extra gate, the gate must be turned on and a hot electron injection method used to load the floating gate. While both approaches cause electrons to jump across the oxide, with hot electrons, all these electrons jump across in a smaller, more focused area right here on the edge of the drain. So the oxide gets damaged in this area much more quickly and the part will typically break and become unusable between 10,000 and 100,000 write cycles you'll see in most data sheets. Okay and finally why is the erase time so much better? Well it turns out that both NORFLASH and EEPROM use the same mechanism to erase the cell. Both set the voltages up like this and push the electrons down into the substrate. This is called fowler nordheim tunneling if you want to study it further. But in this process, in some cells, too many electrons can be pulled out, leaving the floating gate with a slight positive charge. This is a condition called over-erase. Since the flash cell only has one transistor, this over-erase condition is deadly. You can correctly guess that this residue positive charge creates leakage currents under the gate. With enough leakage currents through various gates, then the current sensor that is determining if some other cell is a logic 1 or logic 0 will misread that current because of these leakages. So even though NORFLASH erases just as quickly as EEPROM in theory, that erase process must be stepped slowly. And the amount of electrons pulled out carefully monitored so the cell doesn't move into this over erase state. And that is why in data sheets, you'll see that NORFLASH can take minutes, not milliseconds, but minutes to erase the full IC. But with this extra bit select gate, the EEPROM can turn off the channel completely, independent of the floating gate transistor. And over erase isn't a bad thing in this case. It just doesn't matter. So no monitoring and careful control is even done. No leakage currents exist. And so with EEPROM, you can erase a byte, a page, or even the whole IC inside the 5 millisecond spec. So that's just, what, 48,000 times faster? That could matter in some applications. So let's review what we've learned. First, serial EEPROMs are more expensive to build than serial NORFLASH because the core memory cells have two transistors versus one. But both EEPROM and FLASH have developed huge volume markets EEPROM at the lower densities where the price difference is very small and designers appreciate the single byte erase and write, the higher endurance number, and the 5 millisecond erase time. And third, if price is king for you and you can live with the flash erase feature and need densities over 8 to 16 megabits starting, then buy NORFLASH. If you need byte erase and byte write features or more write cycles and or a 5 millisecond erase time. And you can live with these tiny densities from 1k bit up to about 4 megabits. Then you buy EEPROM.